Now, if you would, I would like to ask you to take a nice deep breath in. And a big sigh, make the ah sound. <sighs> Sit for a moment, be still. Let the breathing come back to normal. So this morning, the day after Easter, I hope you're ready for a new life. I hope you're ready to really make use of your resources. You know, this time, the challenge of this time, all that's going on and all the concerns about the future requires something from you. It requires you to become in connection with your authentic self. You are not going to be able to help the world if you don't get in contact with your true self first. If you try to go right out to it, you'll actually alienate the world. If you say that you believe in a certain thing and you come to that with a, a real antagonistic negativity, automatically people are repulsed by that. I'm not suggesting, however, that we don't set strong and firm limits. We certainly do that. But we remember and never forget that we are one. We are all one. So in this time, we have to use it as a gift. You have to use it as a gift. I call this, t this channel Touching the Edge. Maybe you wondered why. What does that mean? So for me, one of the things I teach my clients and have taught ever since I first began teaching, my first classes I taught were in my, la my late 20s. Um, I got really much more into it uh, around the late 90s. And then I began to really do it, really go for it. So one of the things I teach my clients, it's one of the, the pillars of what I teach my clients, is this, this idea of touching your edge without bursting through it. Your edge is your current edge of limitation. Now, in our, our society, you know, a lot of societies, we, you know, we want to push way past the edge. We want to get into professional athlete level fitness. Or we, we want to um, run a marathon and we don't want to train for it. We just run too far, too hard, too fast, work too much. You know, in every area of your life, you have an edge. You, if you are not present, if you are not, at, you know, seated within yourself, your edge is external to who you actually are. However, if we don't pay attention, the edge will be right here and we'll think we're right here. So what, I, what I'm saying is, is we get separated from ourselves. So our edge is our teacher. The very things that have disturbed you the most in your life happened for you, not to you. I'm not saying that these things are sometimes not horrible events, but we would not be who we are now if those things had not happened. For me, had I not grown up in, in the way that I did, feeling extremely unsafe in that, I would not be doing what I'm doing now. So your edge is your friend if you have a good relationship with it. Right now in the back of your mind, you have an edge. It's there. It's back there. It might be a critique that you have of me, or it might be a concern about the future, or it might be anger about what has been done in the past. There's the edge. The edge is what we fear. The edge is not wanting things to be the way that they are. But if we keep coming up to that limit, not forcing your way through it, because when you force your way through it, you know, if you are a couch potato and you decide to run a marathon and this weekend you're going to do it, you don't do any running, that's, you're going to burst through your edge. And what happens when you do is that you find injury and you have contraction. Now, if you don't touch your edge, if you don't touch what you're capable of, then you also have contraction. You, because you're not, you're not, you're not coming to your full expression. So you you begin to sort of die in on yourself we need all to step up all of us there was a book called the hundredth monkey it came out in the, in the early 70s uh, I, you know I remember reading it at the time and the hundredth monkey was talking about this idea of uh, these people training animal or monkeys in, uh, in a certain island in the Pacific they were training them to gather food in a very specific way that was not the way they had done it before. And they got, they got it going. All the, all the monkeys on this island began to do it. They began to teach each other. Now, supposedly, now I, I consider myself to be an open-minded skeptic. I'm always open, but I'm always like, well, maybe not. But supposedly, on the next island, all of a sudden, the monkeys on that island began to gather food in that way. 
You see what I'm saying? We are connected. These monkeys were connected at the subterranean level of the consciousness. We are all connected. That's why this time has happened so fast. It's, it's ignited like fire behind a wall. You know, it's, it, you know, and all of a sudden it begins to come out. A lot of it is about people who are very egocentric, are egocentric leaders. Well, of course, if our leaders are egocentric, we the body goes where the the body goes where the head leads. However, tranquility is ownership of your own life and realizing that this is the time you were meant to be in. If you hate your life, if you hate what's going on, that means you hate yourself. Because everything that's happened is written on the fabric of your life. So let's step up. Let's, you know, that hundredth monkey, the idea of the hundredth monkey was that all of a sudden there was a, 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 a moment where that monkey was the shifting point. I personally don't think that we're going to work things out by just getting more angry than who we perceive to be on the other side. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to work out because we are more driven than some other group. You know, I feel that the number one element that we need to work on is to come to peace within ourselves and, and as such create that effect to help create that effect in the world. There are people all over the world right now who are grounding and calming. It's like dropping uh, food coloring into a, a uh, glass of water. You keep dropping the food color one drop at a time and then all of a sudden one drop and it all shifts to that next color. I spent a lot of time working in very dangerous situations and grew up in dangerous situations. And, you know, the thing that nobody wants to hear is like, wow, we're, we're going to hell in a handbasket. We got no chance. No, we got this. We got this. It just, all we have to do is shift our relationship to our emotions. If we shift our relationship to our emotions, we will know the way. We will. I just want to tell you how grateful I am to be here today. And I want to leave you with a practice. And, you know, today is the last day of the week in terms of starting the 40-day practice. We will start the second week tomorrow. So gradually build to a peak and understand that what you're doing is not just for yourself. As you get better with your grounding practice, yes, you will get better with things. You'll have better relationships. You'll be more effective. You'll be more creative. However, essentially, it's important to understand that we're working to shift the, humani the, the consciousness of humanity. You will make a difference. You will make a difference just by being there and getting active, of course. So. One last practice here for today, or a practice for today, and that is what I call the gratitude game. Now, when I worked in, um, in mental health and also worked at a, a, a level five uh, high school, I, I ran the time, time out room, you know, and I worked in these really, really aggressive situations. Um, so, even, and I also spent eight years working with develop, people with developmental issues, and this worked with them as well. You know, when somebody would come on the unit, I had to be able to pick them up quickly to, under, to understand what was going on. You know, sometimes people would come in quite a volatile state. I had to be able to read the situation and pick up something quickly, and this was one of the techniques that worked for me. I ask you to use this in your life, the gratitude game. Take four things, express four things you're grateful for, large or small. Remember that small things are just as important as large things. Now ask your loved ones these questions. It'll help to create that loving, energetic field. Trust me, if you are focused on what you're grateful for, you will create your firewall. I want to thank you for being with me today. Uh, I went a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but I'm getting better. Here we go. Listen. Again, this time is happening for you, not to you. It's happening so you can be introduced to yourself. Make sure that you will become more yourself rather than less yourself. I bring my hands into prayer position. I bow to you. The light within me shines out and mingles with the light within you. 
Namaste. Have a great day.